In this lecture, we're going to formally state some of the properties that we've observed in our exploration of Z-transforms this far regarding the region of convergence. We've seen that there's three possibilities for the region of convergence. It can lie exterior to a circle of radius r sub r. It can lie interior to a circle. And we had the interior of a circle when we were looking at the non-causal or anti-causal exponential sequence. And it can lie in a ring. Those are the three possibilities that we can have for the region of convergence. In this case, we had when we had a signal that extended to the right and to the left, it was exponential in both directions. We had an example of the ring. And of course, the ROC cannot contain any poles because the definition of a pole is that x of z is equals to infinity at the pole, which of course corresponds to the z transform not existing. Third, if the DTFT exists, that is, the expression for the discrete time Fourier transform is absolutely summable, then it turns out the ROC includes the magnitude z equals 1, that is, the unit circle. And this relationship goes the other way as well. If the ROC for the Z-transform includes the unit circle, then the DTFT will exist. And of course, this follows from the fact that the DTFT is defined in terms of the Z-transform by setting Z equals e to the j omega. In other words, evaluating Z on the unit circle. Next, if X of n is a finite duration sequence, in other words, it's zero, outside of some interval n1 to n2. So for lower case n less than capital N1, and for lower case n greater than capital N2, we're assuming that x of n is 0. Well, in this case, the ROC is all the z-plane except possibly z equals 0 or infinity. So for the z-transform to exist, it has to be absolutely summable. And that's what I've written here is a sum from little n equals capital N1 to capital N2 of the absolute value of x of n z to the minus n. And that has to be less than infinity. Well, since this sum has a finite number of terms, it's going to converge if all the terms in the sum are finite. And therefore, we only have two possibilities we have to exclude. If there's a z inverse term, in other words, if there's a positive n, then we can't have z equals 0 because the inverse would blow up. On the other hand, if there's a z term, in other words, if one of the n's are negative, so that this is z raised to a positive power, then we have to exclude z equals infinity. But other than those two possibilities, the z transform for a finite duration sequence has a region of convergence equal to the entire z plane. If we have a right-sided signal, as I've drawn here, in other words, it's zero to the left of some point n2, and it exists to the right of some point n2, possibly going forever, then it turns out that the ROC extends out from the largest magnitude pole, as I've drawn here. So we have several poles for this signal, and the largest one is this one here on the positive real axis. So if we draw a circle of radius equal to the magnitude of that pole, the ROC is a region exterior to that there's a possibility that z equals infinity would have to be excluded as well. On the other hand, if we have a left-sided signal, in other words, one that is zero for all values of n greater than some n1, then we know that the ROC lies inside of a circle whose radius is equal to the magnitude of the smallest pole of the system. And with the exception that we might need to exclude z equals zero. We've seen these both of these properties play out in our examples of the geometric signals that extend to the right or in the causal direction. We had region of convergence that was outside of a circle. When we had a geometric sequence that extended to the left or in the non-causal direction, we had ROC inside of a circle. And then, of course, the third case is if we have a two-sided signal. In other words, the signal extends in both directions then the ROC is going to look like a ring, and the ring is going to be bounded by poles. So we'll have a pole on the inside surface of the ring, and we'll have a pole on the outside surface of the ring. 
And we've seen several examples of this as well. And the other thing we've noticed is that not all two-sided signals have Z transforms. There are some signals where there's no values of Z for which the Z transform converges. Now there's some additional properties that have to do with relating pole locations and region of convergence to the properties of systems, and we'll look at those in a later lecture.